Okay, when I looked in the box I had of all old kits and bits and pieces, I came across this little panel meter, which I've never hooked up as far as I know. Unfortunately, I don't have any edge connectors anymore. I used to have a few, so I might just have to solder onto these, which is often what people did anyway. So I might try hooking up the five volts to wherever it said it needed it. Power in, power out, so pin 14, and power common, the other side of pin 14. That makes it pretty easy. And see if that gives us, I guess we can hit the display test as well. Maybe with five volts should light every segment up, analog ground. And then the decimal point setting, run, hold, busy, done, strobe out, display test, binary coded decimal out, digit drive out, where's our ins? Underscale out, overscale out, that's actually an interesting point. Okay, I got as far as working out the power and then I need to hook up, I think it was the enable line there. And then I went and had a look on the internet and actually found there is a data sheet for these 4200 series displays on one of the IC data sheet websites. So that's a, a bit of a bonus. Was it display? Yeah, so they actually, and this gives a diagram. So I got as far as working out the five volt, the power common, and because it's basically listed on here and when I hooked it up got nothing but once you hit this display enable in it actually flashes I'll get the power back on it and just flashes a bunch of digits I think four of the digits out of the four and a half uh, which one was positive again the one that went to there was the negative Yeah, just a four and a half on the plus flashing. So it's just zero, 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 and the little plus symbol. So we still aren't quite where we want to be, but I did get that far and then the camera memory ran out, I think. And it was getting late, so I gave up. And when I, I just sticky tape this label back on and lifted it up and the little display diffuser fell out, which is good because it needs a bit of a clean, so at least I know how to get that out. And it looks like we've got to hook our input up with a, there's two, two analog, what's on this diagram is more use. I was about to get to doing this. You've got analog high end, analog low end, and you've got this analog return. So that return, they're showing it on this diagram connected just to the power common or the, the negative rail, zero volts, whatever you want to call it. So if we, we've got to hook that in and it looks like possibly if you just hook into one of these analog inputs it'll display up to the two volts or you can actually have a different signal between the two which they are showing here somewhere over there this like a bridge type arrangement of your transducer or sensor so I've got like some sort of external battery what they're calling an exciter voltage I think and then yeah those analog high and low on either side, other side of the bridge. And we've got, yeah, the voltage in, and then they've got this adjustment, which I think they hook into yeah, their reference in out connection, which you've got to adjust something. There are some little, I don't know where they are, but there's some sort of little, there's something, something about solder blobs. There's also another data sheet. That's any like the usual little solder blobs that you unsolder to set things, but there is another data sheet that tells you all these different ways of modifying by changing component values and stuff to actually make this meter read different ranges and stuff. So there is a bit of data out there on these. You don't just have to be stuck with them doing a certain range. Even though that range, of course, can be using a shunt or whatever, we can convert it to things like current that's a bit better now it's cleaned up i should have cleaned the inside of the bezel part as well but anyway so i've got to connect this where is a reference and a long sheet of paper again analog return pin three on the b side 
I forget which one's upper and lower now. I think it tells on here. Bottom A, top B. Which one's the top and bottom now? <laughs> I think it went that way, same with the circuit board down. And the display's obviously up to this one. Well, we'll soon find out because the power ones are 15, 14, which is on the B side, yeah. So we've got to go three on that to ground. This third one along, there's a little pad there I can get another piece of this old telephone wire and find my side cutters that have gone roggies. And we want to go from three to which one's ground? This one underneath my lure that goes, or oh, is it this one? This one here. Does that have a little, oh, it's on the other side of that cap, I can't really get to it on the top side of the board. It was the track that went around here, yeah, these pins of the ICs, I guess we could get onto one of them. Of course, ideally you'd have an edge connector so you could you have an edge connector so you could actually connect this a bit easier. So I just bent those pins. So it's, I'm not sure if you always have to have that one earthed. I guess they leave, leave it separate so you can not earth it if you don't want to. Maybe some scenarios you don't want to do that. I think I'll just bring it around here under the board. Somewhere around there. So I don't know if that'll stop it flashing, it might do, but I, we might have to put a voltage. Some of these things I think flash if they've just got no voltage in them at all. Like, they're not getting a sort of signal, so they flash to warn you that it's kind of disconnected. So you're not sort of thinking there's, that you're measuring you know, zero volts, for example. Instead the zero flashes because there's nothing there altogether. Let's see what happens when we hook it up with the reference. Oh yeah, now we're doing something, so we're, we're kind of floating around. So I'll say that mode is to say no reference to anything. And of course we haven't set a decimal point, it's the other thing they show here somewhere, you've got to set your decimal point. In this case it probably would be that one, 1 1.2345 if we're going to measure a low voltage. So I don't know if I can now hook a voltage between earth and one of those analog inputs, just like a 1.5 volt battery or something I guess. This thing's actually counting up sort of thing. We're not in um, some sort of test mode or something are we? I didn't hook up lamp test did I? <laughs> My lamp test should just make everything light up. I think it did confirm that in here. Display test in. Whoops. Now I've shorted out my power supply. Ooh, it actually kept it in memory there for a little bit, whatever it was displaying. Not quite sure what the point. Does this just keep going up? Again, maybe it goes into a different mode, like a test mode or something, when it's hooked to ground, but it's not actually um, receiving anything to those other reference inputs. And this is the problem with some of this stuff, you just don't know what it's gonna do. I'll just leave that counting away. I'm gonna work out what's the other inputs. Not sure analog high and low, whether they really matter. So it's signal input, three lines. But is that only if you've got that? I oh, see so here's showing these little solder bridge things. So they're shown on this diagram. Where are they? Maybe that you normally you'd have like yeah, literally that that etched on the board, two little semicircles with a gap. And then you just solder across them. To connect up what you want, but oops, 
Oh no, I reset it before it, when I was up about 7,000, that'd be right. Can't see those, but maybe they're here somewhere, or maybe it'll link something out. So the analog's on the other side of the board. Seven and eight, I guess we maybe hook up. Let's get rid of that. Hook up both of those. Get this camera back to normal. So we're on one, one, two, three, four, and then a gap. Five, six, seven, and eight of those two, which are not easy to connect to. There are a few little pads and stuff. I don't know if it shows anywhere. There's a board diagram here somewhere. Here we go. SG2, it just points to a line. SG5 to a... Uh, oh, that's supposedly there. Oh, there it is. Five. There's a little solder blob labelled five. Ah, so two... Is that actually... Such a tiny blob. I just, oh yeah, there is a, an opening there. Ah, so they fooled me by making it look like a solder blob, but there is one of those exact double semicircle type things there. Five is bridged across. One over here. Oh, that's in that track. Ah, oh, neat. So they do exist. So that ratio metric operation is the bridge type differential inputs to reduce system errors when two or more reference voltages are otherwise used. Attenuator and shunt resistor pads are supplied on the bottom to program higher current or voltage ranges. Input attenuator, resistors, shunt, solder gaps and jumpers are located by removing the board from the housing. run it like a slave I think that's all the data and stuff you can run like a second slave sort of display they made one I guess that lacks probably that big ICL chip in it probably just had these other driver chips or something and you just send the signal BCD binary coded decimal from one to the other and a couple of other, I think 12 lines they said you had to run in a ribbon cable Voltmeter accepts user supplied attenuator for plus or minus 2 volts to plus or minus 1000 volt full scale. Ammeter shunts for plus or minus 20 microamps to plus or minus 2 amps. But it doesn't really show you how to just connect it up. Analog high, analog low. Yeah, BIOS current path to power common or analog return from both of them must be externally provided. This analog common BIOS return must be externally connected to power common. Pin A14. So why do they just not connect it to that in the first place? Not really sure, but they still show signal in as either of those, and I guess ground is the other reference. Anyway, let's try and hook onto those. It was the other side here, wasn't it? They haven't even made it the easiest to see, but I assume it goes across to seven and eight. Two and four BC oh no, five BCDs. Yeah, so it must be seven and eight. Oh well, let's try connecting to that and see if we get anything more sensible out of this thing. You think you just power it up and you'd have have it reading zero volts kind of thing, but the problem with these industrial kind of ones is they're never that simple. Four, five, six, so seven is that one, which goes all the way up to, oh, that's actually to one of those, oh, one of those joins. 
one of those little SG point things that you can disconnect. In you go. Probably should have stripped that before I soldered it. I'll get one hook to there. And one hook to its mate next to it. Six, seven, and eight. Eight is that little dot. up just like a 1.5 volt battery to one of these nothing five but it's still counting up in the other digit digits or is that just a bit of random I take it off and it's just going like 16 14 13 what the that at least makes the front digits stay solid no I'll go the other way don't I That just keeps counting up, I think. That doesn't do anything, that one. I guess the other thing is, what happens if we hook it across them? That goes to, yeah, 146. With a couple of digits still moving around. They seem to be counting up. Yeah, 148 now. 149. Take that off and it goes back down low. Very weird. So it's like nine five or whatever, and changing. Look at that. We get one five at least, but it's still slowly moving up again. And I think we get we get the same if we go to that one. I think. Well, now it's going up to one eight. That's at least trying to one's ref low, one's ref high, isn't it? I think that's the second one pin eight, which is the low end, so that makes sense because it's only low voltage. But it doesn't really settle down. I guess in this mode though it's got a lot of digits right down to what have we got? One tenth hundreds thousand is it ten thousandths of a <laughs> of a volt? Is that almost getting down in a microvolts or something? But it is kind of settling down sort of. Now we've only got the last digit moving a bit. But if that keeps counting up forever, it's gonna Maybe it just takes so long to settle. So it's slow, not really. Interesting. And now we still got like one, four, seven, even though I've disconnected the battery completely. But it seems to do something, this device. 
Would have been good if I could actually make a bit more sense out of it. I wonder if some capstone charged in there or something. So analog high end, that's got a resistor across to analog low end. Goes into some sort of off amp by the look of it. Integrator and A to D converter, BCD, and then the display. But then we got that reference voltage. Oh, so that's the, that's the trim pot on the back, something to do with gain adjust. Ah, so I wonder if we do we need to disconnect that? SG2 is supplied closed for ref out. Open it for ref in. So it's got like a zener diode and then you adjust it to get one volt on that line. That also connects into our integrator and AD, A to D converter. If we disconnect it, I don't know if getting rid of that SG2 will achieve something because that I think is feeding into the chip. Only one way to find out, I guess, is disconnect it. Where was number two again? One. Let's look at that diagram two. Is that two down here? Oh, well. Can't have to try, can it? Basically doing the same thing. Well, let's... Oh, we're overranged. Or something. It doesn't seem to do anything. Oops. So that's a problem because it's got reference voltages and stuff and we're overranged. So it must be comparing it to that or something and if it doesn't get a internal reference I guess you've got to probably put one into it. if that didn't keep changing. But it gives an idea of what's... And then it just goes to some random other number. It does seem to work. I probably should put a decimal point in place after the one. But yeah, not the easiest thing to just hook on to something and measure the voltage out or whatever with by the look of it. But at least I know it basically works, except that lens has come out again. hook onto that can I? I need to oh, I sort of can that's negative and hopefully that's positive and we don't blow it up oh, it was working there we go and we're back to flashing over range or whatever That's interesting because now I've got this hooked up, shouldn't it? Not do that. I can hook that between those two, can't I? Mm. Okay, so it's gone back to. That's what it did when I disconnected that SG2 order. Oh, I must have it the right way now. Could have sworn it went the other way before. Oh, it's measuring minus 1.5 now. Hmm. I actually connected. Oh, no, there we go. 
not connecting it properly. So that's measuring 1.5 volts. Out of that, that's actually fairly, I was going to say fairly steady now, it is actually steady down. Still creeping up though. Now whether that's got, maybe that's got something to do with me having my fingers on something. That's quite rocks, uh, nearly rock steady. So it's probably working. It's got more digits than you need for most cases though. Certainly down at the low end, you'd want this more reading up higher voltages, I would think, than low ones. You don't need four decimal places, I think. Or three decimal places. Oh, no, it is four, isn't it? One. Yeah, four decimal places. So that's a bit overboard. But anyway, a bit of fun to see if it worked or not. It's probably quite an expensive little industrial type panel meter in its day. Not sure what I could really use it for these days, it's more a bit of a novelty thing. Just have a few LEDs lit up on something. I guess I should probably work out how to get it to read like 0 to 20 volts or something. And then it'd be good on a little power supply or something here. But anyway, thanks for watching.